SF Liberal Buzz. I'm your host, Denise Dory. And we, this show is about liberals and being the critical thinkers. And critical thinkers thinking is something that is alien to uh, the other party. They want, they would rather, uh, they can't control you if you're uh, thinking about other options besides their options. So I'd like to, re I'd like to report on stories I don't hear about on TV. We've had, um, now this, a lot of them, these are cannabis issues, and si which is civil rights, really, cannabis issues equal civil rights. And so, but we'll start with the Twitter, and um, feast your eyes on San Francisco's fugly new architecture. Now give me a follow on Twitter, and I'll give you a follow back. Now see, see there where you've got the tape here, and then you've got the, it's, it's just peeling off the sides. <laughs> And there, there's uh, the Senate bill to allow medical cannabis, MCLR, open source ballot initiative. Now that is going to be our topic tonight. MCLR, medical uh, marijuana control, legalization, and revenue. So, and it preserves Prop, uh, uh, prop for uh, 215, um, SB 420 is the big one. So uh, Obama, maybe it's time for mandatory voting. Yes, mandatory voting is, in, they have it in Australia. They have a small fine if you don't vote. And could Oregon's voting law signal a Democratic push to open up elections by everyone is a, a legal voter if they get a driver's license, they know who you are, right, that you live here. So they tie in and it, it, it'll increase voter participation, which is very low. And MCLR is an open source, uh, source ballot initiative to legalize cannabis, and it's the most in all inclusive one you, that is on the uh, that's coming around. We've got four legalization issues coming out, and there some of them are are really bad. Some of them they want the alcohol and um, beverage control to control cannabis, which is probably the most corrupt organization historically that we know of. So uh, a voter revolt is brewing, and cannabis input makes cannabis laws most effective. So if you want to read about this document, go to my Twitter, and you can, you can see it. So um, California marijuana legalization is already a four-way tussle. Now, we're going, adults may possess grow, process, or transport no more than 12 marijuana plants with six or fewer being mature. Flowering plants in possession of the marijuana produced by the plants on the premises where the plants were grown provided that the growing takes place in an enclosed lock space is not conducted openly or publicly and not made for sale, which we're talking about compassionate use and small growers, which we don't want to abolish the growers being able to grow small growers or really have better quality of medicine. And we've got uh, the cannabis herb is not a drug. Prescriptions are different than recommendations. They want to abolish cannabis uh, recommendations and make them prescriptions so that the, uh, the FDA has to come in and regulate all this. And they, this might out outlaw smoking and whole plant medicine, you know. There's some really bad things that could happen where, where you could have Oh, I have. I think on a previous show we ta uh, I talked about uh, oh a GPS, a global positioning system to make sure that the uh, the vapor pen doesn't you don't redirect the medicine. So that's a really cool uh, police state if I ever heard it. And uh, the Senate bill on the surface it seems just fine that it becomes a prescription drug which insurance can cover. In the 23 states, however, if you look below the surface, you will see shark circle. The reason for it to remain recommended is not to involve the FDA, to keep the plant folk medicine. We don't want a pill. We need sliding scale to free with co-pays, but not making big pharma the boss. Have you heard of patented GPS vapor pens? Yeah. Schedule 2, now if they reschedule it from Schedule 1 to Schedule 2, it carries heftier, heftier jail sentences which are, uh, and it's a huge minus, it removes from the Controlled Substance Act uh, in 23 states. Schedule 2 puts more threats of jail time to the rest of America 
We won the drug war and should not settle for this, nor should we settle beer cops. You know, beer cops, al alcohol beverage control, uh, they would be in control of beer as well, even though alcohol and can is not a, not a medicine and cannabis is. So we don't want half our nation having harsher penalty for pot. We only have GMO factory cannabis for the other half. So the um, drug policy uh, alliance is the user think tank, and there's a drug policy, Illuminati's. Uh, they are involved in government think tanks. But they are backing some very bad policy currently. They are at the root of Washington State's problems and want to have beer cops police medical cannabis. It's they're the most corrupt historically, like I said before. We don't need a return to criminalization. The herd is smarter than some of the people trying to control it. So, there's a lot of concern from the very top down. The non-transparency and non-inclusion, for example. If you organize without a state interest, the top, uh, people or, who are organizing without a state interest, and uh, to talk about grassroots activism at a at a uh, at a, a function for six hundred dollars a ticket. Now, who could afford to get in there and talk about policy with them? Uh, we have a caller. I think it's my guest, Shona. Hello. Hello. How are you doing this evening? You have to move away, move your phone away from your TV. I'm um, not near the TV. I think that's on your end. Big black cock, big black cock, big black cock. Let's see, I wonder who that was. Some strange person. So, um, Prop 215, the people that worked for Prop 215, uh, they, lo they locked out the activists and the people who worked for Prop 215 in the policy. Let's see if that's Shona. Shona, is that you? I don't think it's working. I can't get it to work. No, phone's not working. Hmm, it's not working. That must have been the, my guest. She, uh, she, she could call my cell phone. But try calling my cell phone. You got my number. Call my cell phone. I'll put it on speaker so we can get through this because we got we still got 15 minutes left. And Asa, you know we, the American. Okay, we'll see if this works. There's a lot of concern from, from everyone, uh, the non-transparency, the non-inclusion. If you organize without a state interest to talk about grassroots activism, uh, they had discussions in San Francisco without invite to black and brown just cannabis, cannabis policy. And even though black and brown just cannabis policy were seated at city hall working groups um, recently, this is San Francisco City Hall, um, now, ASA and the, the Marijuana Policy Project, they didn't wait, uh, they weighed in, but I mean, we really, they, if it was up to them, we would have shut most of the dispensaries in California, so that's really, it was a coercive monopoly. Nobody in California wants policy similar to Washington or even California, Colorado. Now, there's a lot of people that want, are looking at California, they just want to, it's going in so many different directions, so we've got to have the community input is the best, so that's why we say MCLR. And uh, so I'm going to get to that in a moment. Let's see if this works. Hello? Shona? Peace? Yes, Hi, Frank. Peace. This is Frank. Hey, Frank. Shona was, said she was going to call in, but she hasn't yet. So I, yeah, I'm, yeah, you're having trouble with your uh, your calls there. I'm sorry to hear that, but you're looking great. Yeah, this has uh, been something about, uh, you know, the, the uh, St. Mary, St. Grace Cathedral hosing down the homeless with, uh, 
you know, uh, cold waters. I mean, like, these people don't have enough trouble, you know. They have to be, you know, cold water. That just, you know, San Francisco, I don't know, just makes me, makes me so crazy I could just scream about this dehumanizing the poor. You know, uh, yes. you know it gets them all to feed the poor, you know. It, I think they're trying to kill them. They're trying to kill the homeless off. Well, and this landlord greed, how about somebody getting their rent raised 300%? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. that made national news. That made national news. My friends on the East Coast even heard about that, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's become a cutthroat town. Man, uh, San Francisco is the most me. expensive place to live in the entire world. In the entire world. Oh. And then they, unless we get some rain, and I just hear the, I hate to be always. Well, anyway, the good news is tomorrow is the vernal equinox. You know, let's hope that uh, it's going to be a powerful, you know, eight year for, you know, and, well, I'm going to remain off. I'm not going to be cynical. Well, I'm sorry you're having trouble. I'll get off the phone and see, uh, see if Shauna can get through for at least the last 10 minutes of your show. Okay, sorry you're having all that trouble. Oh, I'm all right. But thanks for calling, Frank. It's always sure, good to hear sure. I'm glad I got through. Okay, have a good show. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Okay. Yeah, and that's Psychic Frank. He can, his show can be seen every second and fourth Thursday at 5 p.m. on this channel. He, he, gives, he gives great psychic readings. He, he'll pull a card for you. Give him a call. He's, he's a, a good friend of mine. He's got a bunch of birds that fly all around his house. and he, you know, They all understand each other. It's great. <laughs> they even talk. So, let's see if this is my friend Shona. Shona P. Shona. Hey, how is it going? Great to hear from you. Oh, you're my fourth caller, and the first two were somebody I didn't know. So, Shona Gokenauer, uh, to get, tell my audience, is the, uh, is the educational director for Access of Love, a compassionate community giving cannabis to low-income patients and, and more. And uh, so Shona Gokenauer can be, um, you can follow her at Access of Love SF on Twitter. Okay, so Shona, I was talking about um, uh, the letter that you wrote to the, the DPA, Drug Policy Alliance. Right. So there's a really mixed piece of legislation on our Senate floor and just a lot of problems, uh, you know, at the state level as well, um, putting together something for the state of California. So at the Senate level, the problem is, you know, it only really <laughs> It only really takes care of the 23 medical cannabis states, and there's still an issue with um, the, the rest of the states moving to Schedule 2. And while that does allow for some research, it also carries much heftier jail terms. And um, part of the problem um, in the, the legislation that's upon the floor called CARES is that it also um, changes from a recommendation to a prescription. Yes. Now, the good side of being a prescription is that you would have the insurance coverage and the co-pays, which is so desperately needed for working class and middle class uh, patients and poor patients. However, <coughs> when you have a prescription drug, it has to go through the FDA. So we're looking at the destruction of whole plant medicine, which is really what offers people the relief. And one thing um, that we've been pushing for that's not unrealistic or hippy-dippy in any, any manner is descheduling cannabis on a national level. Take it off the Controlled Substance Act and treat it as what it is. It's an herbal pain relieving you know, mood elevating uh, supplement, and it could be recommended the same way your physician recommends, you know, other herbal supplements, and they aren't necessarily prescriptions. When you start really breaking down the plant, you're also breaking down 
the, the synergy of the plant that actually helps people. So, um, yes. there's it, pluses and minuses all over this. Yes, uh, well, they make Big Pharma will be the boss. If well, we, if that's the big problem, isn't it? <laughs> They'll figure is that out. we don't want medical cannabis controlled by big pharma or a marriage of big pot business and big pharma. The hybrid of that is a pretty nasty monster. And we have some of that going on at the state level as well, where we have one group of, well, we have kind of three different groups of people um, trying to accomplish uh, a state voter uh, ballot initiative. We've got the CCPR, which are people from Prop 19, which is something that divided the medical cannabis community because it was a Monsanto-like profiteer uh, statement. And those folks are having these sort of dog and pony shows to create some sort of false uh, manufacture of consent and then you have the team that I'm supporting, which is MCLR 2016, which has a completely open source language. We've reopened it for 2016. You can go look at it, see if there's something that needs to be improved. You can put your hands and heart on this legislation. You don't need to be in any elite community or any clandestine policy group. Um, it's for everyone to take a look at. And then we have the CCHI folks who claim to be these big personal liberty and people who have be able to have 12 pounds and all this stuff. But if you actually read it, what it does is it gives all the powers of regulation back to the politicians in the state house, which is exactly the opposite of what a voter ballot should do. Yeah. But the big crazy thing about it is that we have a new law about voter initiatives in California where once it looks like you have something that can gather a certain amount of signatures, you have to sit down with the legislator uh, and see if a compromise can be worked out. And that is really scary because it can be used by the more affluent one percenter team the CPR folks, to sort of circumvent the voters of California. And I think that, that may very well be their plan because we've proved to them with Prop 19 if they put something on the ballot that doesn't support all of California's growers and patients and consumers will knock it down. So they might just take a shortcut and bypass us. So we have to be very careful this year. Oh, yes, it, yes, it, we do. We've got four things happening. We've got MCLR, and we've got, don't we have a, a Senate bill from the 26, now it's 226 or something like that? Well, we've got two different um, assembly bills, so they're not, uh, and this is at the state level, so yeah. the, the, the CARES program is at the national level, and that's on the yeah. national Senate floor. Is that the Rand Paul one? Right, that one's all mm -hmm. the way, the Ron Paul one is all the way up in, in the Senate and on the national and federal level. And there's a lot of good stuff in it, but there's a real devil in the detail. Oh, there's yeah. a poison pill in there. I was reading it. Yeah. And then we have at our, you know, more localized level in our state assembly, we have two different bills. We have AB26 and AB266. Oh, which is a little confusing. And then we have about 16 other bills that are being flung at us, too. So there's a lot of movement everybody wants in the game. But the two things that you need to know is that AB 266 comes from the police chiefs and is it's awful. restrictive. And AB 26 is also terrible, and that comes from the industry lobbyists that want to narrow the playing field and create monopolies. Mm. So both of those I oppose. Yes. Well, we don't but want to But they don't. Help. I mean, they've been assigned to committees, 
but they don't have hearing aids. It's going to be a while before we need to really get folks on buses and get to Sacramento. And there's a lot of rumors going around that nobody's real serious about any of the 18 bills about cannabis going on in the state house because they could all be kind of flip-flopped with whatever ballot initiative comes up. Well, what would Trump, would the ballot initiative trump us, uh, the, the uh, state, the assembly bill, the state assembly bill? Would a ballot initiative trump that or unless, or the Senate bill? Well, the, yes, a voter initiative can amend and correct, you know, um, the will of the people always uh, can trump the, the will of the legislator. Um, so, you know, if we do get something really terrible passed, we do have a moment to kind of fight back, but then again, we have this new process with the uh, the voter ballots in California, and part of it's good because it gives us more time to gather signatures, but part of it's bad because if, you know, if we don't get to the drafting table at the point where we've gathered enough uh, signatures to meet with the state legislator, the, the rich team is just going to blow everybody over and they're going to circumvent the voters and they're going to try to establish a very coerce of monopoly in California. I don't know if you read yet, but in Washington state, their uh, congressional committee just um, voted to shut down all the medical dispensaries in Washington state. If we let these folks into California, you best believe they're going to do the same. <laughs> yeah, well, we, that's about all the time we have, Shona, and thanks for calling. You bet, Denise. Keep up the good work. I love your show. Thank you. you got to come in person sometime. Bye-bye, Oh, I know, everybody. I know. <laughs> yeah, I when, do you. Want, when do you want